Well, when did you become aware that photos were taken of his notes? And then Mary says, well, after the sweep, the judge says, but wait, before the grand jury subpoena? The judge says, so there's nothing else. We don't know what the answer is to that. So the, the prosecutors had said they got a subpoena to get access. You could get a, uh, you could have a subpoena to get, it could, it's kind of like a warrant, damn near, right? You know what I mean? You could subpoena information, which is almost like now you have a reason to bring it into court. But they're saying, did you hear about it before you got the subpoena? Because the subpoena is usually to ask for it if it exists, not to know that it exists already. And now you're finding some weird way to bring it into court. Uh, so just said, so there's nothing else to say. And Mary then says, well, Diddy's lawyer says the defense team doesn't know what the taint team has. But we made a production to them last night of everything. We gave him not just 19 pages, uh, um, but they were past everything. We passed them to the, the, their case team. And Mary then says, these material was obtained as part of the government's covert ongoing grand jury investigation. So that's where the subpoena comes in. So by the way, a current grand jury is investigating and still watching to see if they're going to supersede the indictment. This could be part of witness tampering charges to come, or it could be part of more charges that are just replicating with victims or other charges to do with whatever they think he's doing, right? It says we're not required to noti notify um, the defense of our ongoing investigation of criminal conduct. We receive these materials in an appropriate channel. Whenever we get new information, if there's a reason to believe there's privilege, it goes to the filter team. Okay. Now, this is going to be, again, I could see the Supreme Court actually looking into this. There's probably already case law on file that actually gives precedence to this. But if not, I could see Diddy's team running it up to the Supreme Court of the United States. So here's the two arguments that's going against each other. Diddy's saying, hey, I get it. I'm in jail. You could search my jail, jail cell for drugs, guns, contraband. But when y'all start going through my legal notes and then you take my legal notes and pass it to the prosecutors and enter it in as evidence of me not getting bail, well, you just did an illegal search and seizure, and it's illegal search and seizure because it's confidential. It should be only be, be between me and my lawyer. They're saying, um, the, the, the government or the, you know, the AUSAs are saying, well, yeah, we have a guy that's listening to the phone calls, but we don't pick who do their sweeps. Their sweeps were independent. They they um, did the sweep and then they came up. They have a team that's called Taint Team that looked at it and said, "These type, this stuff looked like it's violated, or seems to be in line with some criminal conduct." They actually thought Diddy was saying, "Pay this pe person off," like he was sending messages type shit. So they're saying they then pa passed that um, to us after our grand jury subpoena which we didn't do anything wrong. We're just investigating and we don't have to alert him or his lawyers about our investigation. So a grand jury could, you know, it's usually secret and it is secret right now because we don't know what's been going on, but they could get your phone records. They're not going to tell you um, or they could get whatever. They, they, they don't have to tell you for the grand jury. Now for the trial and, and if it gets brought into trial, they then have to put it in some paperwork, but whatever. Anyway, cool. So that's the two opposing sides. Is this a Fifth Amendment violation or not? So, cool. It says, we're not required to notify the defense of our ongoing investigation of criminal conduct. We receive these materials in an appropriate channel. Whenever we get new information, if there's a reason to believe this is privilege, it goes to the filter team. Um, it says, then the judge says, well, if there were verbatim notes in of his meetings with his lawyers, how would you know without asking the defense? So I guess the judge is saying, so you're saying you weren't going to tell the defense nothing because you don't got to tell them because you're investigating them. But how would you know if it's his meeting notes if you don't ask them, hey, are these your meeting notes? <laughs> and Mary says, I understand. There is a dialogue between the defense and the filter team. I'm not a part of that. So there's claiming, well, we have a filter team 
that then talks to their people. Okay, they're just doing the rigmarole, pretty much. The judge says, I don't understand that divided line between the covert investigation and the discovery in this case, given that the defendant has been charged. So, um, the judge looked like they're siding with Diddy a bit, right? So the, the AUSA then says, once our grand jury investigation is ongoing into the conduct um, that has not currently been charged, we have multiple ways of getting that information that are not obvious to the defendant. We're not obliged to inform them, okay? And we have no authority for that. And the judge says, I want to be cautious since some of this is sealed. But is any of this privilege? And the AUSA says, the notebook labeled things to do, not attorney client. They suggest they were meant to be in a folder um, marked legal, but self-labeling isn't enough. So I guess th there's two different folders, or I guess maybe they're separated. One is a legal folder, and there's one that says things to do. Diddy's argument is everything that's there is supposed to be included in the legal folder. They're saying, we didn't look at it like that. We just thought it was just things to do, not legal, right? Cool. Uh, all right, bet. So it says th these these include action items for non -law lawyers. Uh, that's not privilege. Their information about family members' birthdays also not privilege. We point to the Lumiere decision by Judge Rakoff. We're happy to engage with the the defense. The judge says, "How about agreeing that I should not consider these two excerpts in your oppose uh, in your opposition to the bail motion." And then the AUSA says, I think that's right. For the bail argument scheduled for Friday, the judge says, what about putting them in a vault? There, there are inspirational messages. The AUSA says, these are related to our ongoing investigation. There's no reason to put the notes in a vault. As a matter of procedure, the defendant would have to make a motion. These notes are not a a attorney-client privilege. The, the AUSA says, then there's work product, which is broader, which... It's meant to protect the attorney mental process, but these are not. It's about an administrative question. Following up with a paralegal is not protected. The judge says, what if an individual had counsel paid by another? Okay. Hmm. The, the AUSA says the payment, not privilege. And if it's about having paying off a witness, that is what we're investigating. These notes refer to individual two, a non-lawyer, third party. It's on his to-do list. The judge says a defense lawyer can investigate potential witnesses. It will be malpractice not to. If these are about the defense team preparation for witnesses, isn't it a closer call if it falls into work product? AUSA says the person tasked is a non-lawyer. Okay, so they're arguing real semantics, right? Then the AUSA says, on October 18th, the defendant told a family member to work with a non-lawyer to find out everything about victim two. And this non-lawyer, individual two, is not identified as a part of the defense team. The judge then says, what about turning over the surveillance video of the raid or the search of the cell? He says, We're, we are opposed. There is no authority for that. The judge says, I noticed that Mark says they want to work with you to resolve this. So Mark starts to laugh. And the judge says, you may not agree, but why not discuss? And Mark says, uh, I don't want to give them insight. So Diddy's lawyer doesn't really want to try to work with them to kind of discuss. Hey, listen, Diddy's lawyer doesn't want to explain what they found, right? And I get why. Like, the fuck are we going to explain to them what they found? They already got the codes. They got the nuclear codes. We're supposed to explain to them how to fucking use it? Hell out of here. Um, so he says, all the legal pads say legal. What the government say, is saying was search is not just accurate. So the judge says, wait, are you saying the photos were taken from the pads marked legal? Can you show me? Diddy's lawyer walks up and shows the judge, uh, um, the, the I guess like a picture. The, Diddy's lawyer says, when we visit him in jail, we have lists. Everything in these pads are what we discuss. Trial strategy, who should we should be speaking with to undermine a witness credibility. We discuss everything with Mr. Combs. This is a sweeping racketeering case. Okay? Then they say, yo, we're studying this man's life for our bail application, his charity work. There's not a single day that goes by that we don't spend every nook and cranny, that we don't spend time on every nook and cranny of this man's life. I have a case. 
Very important case, okay? Is that Diddy comes out and reads us his to-do list. This is privilege. Them 19 pages include things we've said to him. The name of potential witness is a retired doctor. Now they have that. That's in the heartland of the attorney-client privilege. He said, Combs comes out, reads us his list. Oh, okay, he said this twice. He says, the judge says, hmm, looking at the case you cited, said, Mrs. Slav Mrs. Slavic, are you familiar with it? The Mary, Miss Slavic, she says, I'm not, Your Honor. Then Diddy's lawyer says, Miss Garagos has something to say. Then this is um, Mark Garagos' daughter, Tenny Garagos, who says, they have they say they have a covert grand jury investigation, but there's the current indictment. And the prosecutor then says, We're talking about the eleven pages of notes. Not a stack. None of these notes are legal. The judge says the notes themselves are not legal, but the page was in a legal pad that was marked legal. The prosecutor then says it's not clear when the defendant wrote that on. Then the judge says, listen, we will have a bail hearing on Friday at which I will not consider the material. And he's talking about what was found in Diddy's cell. He says, in terms of running down the privilege issues, we can we can take weeks. Any issue with that time frame? Diddy's lawyer says no. And judge says, I'll issue a schedule. And uh, Diddy's lawyer then says, if they're intending to seek a supersede indictment with these notes, hmm. And the judge says, prosecutors? And they says, just to be clear, the filter team can keep the notes? The judge says, if they're not involved in a grand jury investigation or this case, or if they're not involved in the grand jury investigation or this case. Oh, okay. And then they, uh, Diddy's lawyer says, they should preserve the video. AUSA says, fine. Then the judge says, what about Jeffries? Okay, the Abercrombie case in EDNY, Eastern District of New York, by the way. He says the government released that person on $10 million bail. Be prepared to address why this is different. And AUSA Slavic says, no, this is very different. Just says, see you Friday. Okay. Okay. Big win for Diddy. Big, big win for Diddy. Okay. So essentially, so essentially, the judge seemingly has said, if you guys are looking for a superseding indictment, those notes cannot be used. And the only way you could keep him are if they're not involved in this current case or the grand jury investigation. Now, he, he had mentioned putting a vault. Let, let me just kind of sum it up on what his ruling is. He didn't fully rule that they can't use this stuff. He's saying, I'm going to rule on it, but it might take months because I'm going to really think about this. And the reason why he's going to think about this, this is the very core of what would be a Fifth Amendment violation. And because he doesn't want to think on it and just make a decision now, he wants to read case law. He wants to do a lot on this to make sure he's coming to the right decision that if, not even if, it will get most likely appealed, no matter what he says, especially if he goes against Diddy. He hopes that the Court of Appeals, or let's say it goes beyond that to the Supreme Court, they're going to say, no, he made the right decision. So he's saying it's going to take months, but for now, nobody use it in investigating him for a superseding indictment, or in this case, and I'm not going to consider it in the bail um, application happening on Friday. So what are they going to consider? They're going to consider what they've said before that Diddy um, has tried to like contact witnesses, which Diddy had a response for that saying, oh no, no, I didn't. Um, you know, I did have contact with certain people, but um, it was, it was not to get them to say anything on my behalf. I've never tried to coerce a witness or threaten nobody. Now, the only thing that they're going to have to argue is, did Diddy use the jail phone privileges of someone else to make calls to people? Because the judge has pretty much thrown out all the notes. So the notes 
the government can't use. So because the government was saying, yo, he had stuff written down that were meant to be either passed to his lawyer or his lawyer was supposed to give to so and so to act out on whatever did he want to be done, which might be intimidate a witness, silence a witness, pay off a witness. And the judge is saying, y'all can't use that shit because it might be attorney client privilege. Y'all might have violated his Fifth Amendment right. So, um, Fourth Amendment right. Fourth Amendment right. right. Sorry. So, y'all can't use that, and I'm going to make a schedule on how I'm going to make that ruling, and um, that might come with more arguments, might come with another hearing, but I'll give you the schedule on that, but it's probably going to take months, right? So, that's a big win for Diddy. Now, do I think he's getting out Friday? The judge kind of seem like they're they're leaning his way a bit. They're, they're, the judge brought up himself, yo, the Abercrombie and Fitch CEO got out on 10 million bail, right? Jeffries Abercrombie 10 million. Look, so he got out on 10 million in bail. Yeah. He was released on $10 million in bail, right? And shit. Ooh, what the fuck? Oh, let me watch this. Uh, give me one second. What the hell is this? Sorry, let me just let this play. And then I'll play it. Hold on, give me one second. This is just... I took my ad blockers off and shit because these things were just fucking hating. The fuck is this? Oh my god, I didn't mean to click on it. Okay, so the how many men over 50 stay in the game? What the fuck? Okay, here we go. It's the former CEO of Abercrombie and Fitch, Mike Jeffries, appearing in federal court in West Palm. Yeah, he got free. That nigga free as a bird. Beach, he is one of three men at the center of an FBI. Let me Google these guys. Mike Jeffries. You always gotta search up them politics, man. I'm telling you. You got you gotta search up them with the with the president. Biden. Uh you gotta see if they got any type of uh allegiance to either side. Trump. Cause trust me. They're definitely gonna lean on all that type of shit to try to get out of this shit. Anyway. By investigation accused of running a prostitution and international sex trafficking operation. The defendants allegedly preyed on the hopes and dreams of their victims by exploiting, abusing, and silencing them to fulfill their own desires with insidious secret intentions. Good evening. I'm Felicia Rodriguez. Investigative reporter Terry Parker was in court for today's hearing and has been digging through that indictment. She learned prosecutors believe these crimes were going on in okay. New York. All right. Anyway, Just anyways. Okay. So this dude got $10 million bail. Um, if you ask me, big W for Diddy. I think Diddy has gotten a judge to look at the prosecutor in a with a side eye to say, hmm. Are y'all taking advantage of this guy? And maybe I should let him out on bail because if, you know, th this was a really strategic way that his lawyers argued it because this bail hearing on Friday, you know what they're going to say? Yo, judge, you already see what type of time they're on. They're trying to keep my client locked up, raid his cell, find more shit. They're, they're, they're trying to build a case and the only case they got is trying to raid his cell. That's not fair. You know? So, again, if the judge is kind of feeling like, mm, maybe. Now, granted, I do think Mark has, he still has to fully jump over the hurdle. He's going to do, he's going to have to do it in court Friday. You have to convince the judge that Diddy will not be contacting witnesses, will not be using intermediate intermediaries to harass people will not be trying to pay people off. And I think that's going to be tough. But Diddy's a little bit closer to getting bail. He's a little bit closer to getting bail. I th I thought his bail prospects were like 
right? After the Abercrombie person got got bail, I thought it went to 15%. After now, with them doing this weird shit where they raided a cell and is using that as reason to keep him in jail because they're now using that as, oh, potential investigative material in his current case, um, I give him 30%. Like right now, I say 30, 35, 30%. So if you ask me 30, 35% chance, Diddy gets out Friday, which means the judge might just say, you know what? Um, for you to properly prepare for trial and also to kind of, you know, they're not going to rule on the note stuff, but we're going to let you out on the 50 million you, you, you proposed. So we're going to see. Right. And apparently the judge said he told the, the prosecutors to get rid of them. So, yeah. So those are the notes. He's told them to get rid of them. The quote unquote filter team could keep um, a copy of them until the judge rules on it. But the prosecutors cannot have it and cannot use them. Cool. Interesting. Diddy's not looking that bad right now, man. I think the prosecutors are trying to hurry up with that super scene indictment. They, you know, cases like this, you got to bury somebody to really be effective. And I would think they would try to bury Diddy. Um, but it's not happened yet. Anyway, um, very interesting. You know, we were having these uh, weekly lawsuit filings against Diddy. There were civil suits. That were coming from this guy, Tony Busby. You remember he did the whole press conference, this and third. And um, every week he was filing about like four or five lawsuits. One time he filed six that listed people as Jane Doe's. He also put out a message saying that for all these other people that helped Diddy or concealed Diddy's actions or didn't didn't step in. He warned those people, hey, remember this, you're going to be outed. Now, what's actually very interesting is that this lawyer is now being sued. That's interesting, right? He's being sued. Keep in mind, he is a lawyer that has brought the most civil cases against Diddy because he brought like 15, right? He posted this to his Instagram. This is a very interesting chat. I want you to go down a rabbit hole with me. Listen to this. So Tony Busby, by the way, he's based in Houston, says, uh, I've been sued in Los Angeles in a last ditch effort to attempt to stop me from revealing names in public lawsuits. It won't work. The irony, the suit against me was filed by a powerful John Doe. Here's my full statement. We won't allow the powerful and their high dollar attorneys to intimidate and silence sexual assault survivors. It has been reported that a lawsuit that has filed uh, against my firm claiming extortion. These lawyers that filed it also immediately called TMZ in an effort to silence those who allege sexual assault. Here's the deal. The case filed against my firm is not only without legal merit, it is laughable. Here's why. On behalf of two clients who allege, whoa, wait, what? Here's why. On behalf of two clients who allege sexual assault, we sent a standard demand letter to a New York lawyer that we know represents an alleged perpetrator and potential defendant. These letters were sent seeking a confidential mediation in lieu of filing a lawsuit. No amount of money was included in the demand letters. No threats were made. The demand letters are sent are no different than the ones routinely sent by lawyers across the country in all types of cases. It is obvious that the frivolous lawsuit filed against my firm is an aggressive attempt to intim intimidate <clears throat> or silence me and ultimately my clients. That effort 
is a gross miscalculation. I am a U.S. Marine. I won't be silenced or intimidated. Neither will my clients since our professional efforts at resolution obviously have failed. We will instead disclose the demand letters we we sent at the time of filing suit. Abuse. Oh, at the time we filed suit. Sorry. Abuse of the legal system, unfortunately, runs rampant. The lawsuit filed against my firm is a prime example of that. Sunlight is the best disinfectant. I have confidence that with full public disclosure, all of this will sort itself out. Hmm. He also posted this today, four hours ago. Whoa. Says the Busby Law Firm, along with co-counsel Ava Law Group and the New York Local Council Curious Law, is filing five more cases today. Alleged aggravated sexual assault, sexual abuse, and sexual exploitation against Sean Diddy Combs and those entities with whom he has been affiliated. Several other individuals are referenced in the case filings, but are not at this time formally named as defendants. The case are being brought for conduct that occurred as far as back as years 2001. The egregious conduct set out in the lawsuits occurred in New York, Miami, and Miami, Florida. Um, three of the alleged victims in these cases are male, two are females. We will let the allegations in the filed complaints speak for themselves and will work to see that justice is done. We expect the filing we expect to be filing cases weekly, naming Mr. Combs and others as defendants as we continue to gather evidence and prepare the filings. Lead counsel, Tony Busby. Hmm. You can stay up to date on future filings, social media, Tony Busby, or on the web at www.texasattorneys.com. Interesting. Ten billion dollars recovered in here. Okay, so let me tell you why this is slightly interesting. This is slightly interesting because we do know that some some high profile individual they're they're having their attorneys punch back. They're suing this guy. They don't want to be connected to this mess. It appears they probably haven't been connected to it yet. Because they're filing as a John Doe. They're, they're, they're actually accusing the lawyer of extortion, right? Now, TMZ, remember they said they went to TMZ? TMZ actually got, what the fuck? Oh, uh, I guess the, these lawsuits just dropped. Oh, my God. All right, man. Hold on. TMZ reported on this. And this was the report. And check this out, chat. This is kind of, check it out. A prominent figure suing the lawyer that rep more than 120 of Diddy's alleged victims. Says the attorney shamelessly attempting to extort exorbitant sums from him while threatening a lawsuit packed with widely false horrific allegations if he doesn't pay up. The plaintiff only identified as John Doe filed his own lawsuit in L.A. County Superior Court Monday morning, describing himself as a high-profile individual who Diddy and who knew Diddy and attended events along with the mogul. He's being repped by one of the premier law firms in the country. Now, chat, this is important, and this is why I um read this. So... Quinn Emanuel. This is this is a really this is a really prestigious firm right here. Um Quinn Emanuel Here we go. Now, we we still won't be able to tell who it is, but let's see if we can figure out the attorneys that work here. Now, I'm going to have to Google most of them to see if they've ever represented people before. Um, we did get one hint from Tony Busby. He said, we had sent our demand letter to one of the New York attorneys that represent this guy or person, 
you might be a woman frequently. And um, I don't know. Yeah, these are all lawyers that work for this company. You look like it's a lot. I don't know. What the fuck? Huh. We got a couple of associates, a couple partners. I don't know. Hmm. I'm trying to see if it's a lawyer that, that we know. What the fuck? They got 23 pages? Oh, they got mad people that are lawyers out here. Jesus. Any name that sticks out? I'm looking, but there's a lot. 23 pages of lawyers. What the fuck? Twenty three pages of lawyers. Yeah, none of these names. I'm 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 hoping you know. I think we know the celebrity lawyers. Their names jump off the the, the, the um the page. So that's why I'm looking to see if I can find any of those people. Uh, I can't see nobody. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, chat. This is like throwing... This is finding a needle in a haystack. We don't know. It could be any of these guys. This is a firm, but, like, there's so many lawyers that work for this damn firm. It's a very powerful firm, though. They got a lot of partners and all type of shit. This is... Mm. Yeah, I can't. I don't know. Okay, let me try it from the other side. Quinn Emanuel. What? What celebrities does Quinn Emanuel represent? Okay. Is Alex Spiro? At Quinn Emanuel. Hold on. S. Oh. We know Alex Spiro. That's interesting. Hmm. Anybody else? Entertainment and media litigations. Quinn Emanuel. Representation. Let's see who they defended. They got some big companies in here. Uh, okay. Copyright. I got a bunch of stuff there. Trying to see what rapper is there, probably. I don't know. I'm thinking it's going to be a rapper, right? Hmm. Man, they do a lot of shit. God damn. They're probably pulling in easily billions a, a year, right? Oh, how many? Okay, so these are all the partners. Okay. And Spiro is one of the partners. Hmm. 
Now, a lot of people look at Alex Spiro as Rock Nation's lawyer, right? Alex Spiro, people just associate him as Rock Nation's lawyer. But but he's also kind of represented other people as well, right? Alex Spiro rap clients. Now, I want to be careful here because I don't want to just assume that some people believe this is this John Doe happens to be Jay-Z. That's what some people think. I don't know if it does. And, and, and we have to be very careful in trying to figure out if it, if it is. Um, because, number one, J, even Jay, no matter what you think of him, you got to be fair. And he deserves some fairness in, in being in treated, being, um, treated fairly, right? And also, just truthfully, Alex Spiro, I remember Alex Spiro represented Bobby Schmurter for a while. Not saying it's Bobby Schmurter either, right? It's past high-profile clients. Yeah, you represent Elon Musk, right? Come on now. Put some motherfucking respect on that nigga name. Elon Musk, Alec Baldwin, Meg Thee Stallion, Jay Z. He also represents. I think he represented Twenty One Savage as well. And Meek Mill. So it could be anybody, right? It, and 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 we don't know if if it's Alex Spiro, who was sent this demand letter. Right? We don't know. Interesting. So when I say here goes act scared again. No, no, it's not being scared. It's just that you know I don't want to speak as if I know without actually being very fair. Like Alex Spiro, that name kinda we mostly see it with Rock Nation interests. But it's not Jay Z's exclusive lawyer, so it would be very foul and, and and unfair to say that means it's Jay. Now you could probably use your brain to be like, well, who do we think might you know people might be targeting if they're a super high profile person? We would think people are targeting Jay as well. And honestly, notoriously, we we haven't heard Jay's name being mentioned at all. But you know, and also to be fair. In in most of these like cases, they're hitting up these people saying, "Yo, listen, you don't want your name in it, you'll just pay us." But who has the deepest pockets in hip hop? Even deeper than pause, by the way, even deeper than um, Diddy, it's gonna be Jay. So either Jay is really clean, or maybe he is getting these letters that are saying, "Hey, pay us four million dollars, and we won't put you in the lawsuit." Which, if you're now Tony Busby, and you have 120 potential Diddy victims, and by the way, we, we learned a little bit more from the um, for, from from this father. And again, we, we don't know if it's Jay yet. We don't know if it's Jay, but if it's Jay, that would be very revealing. That means that means that there is something being there's something brewing, man. There's some there's a storm coming. There's a storm coming. Now, we obviously have to remember that uh, Alex Spiro um, announced that they were going to file lawsuits against bloggers, which uh, in, in terms of the Tory and Meg situation, which then resulted in a lawsuit against um, Milagros. So if if his stance is to file lawsuits against bloggers who he feels are speaking ill or defaming, maybe a client of this, why wouldn't his stance not be to file lawsuits against attorneys who he feels are trying to shake down his clients? So it could be Alex Spiro. So we don't we, we also don't know if it's Alex Spiro. We know we know it's the firm. Quinn Emanuel, Alex Spiro works for that. The only lawyer we, we seemingly know that represents hip hop clients, or we, we just kind of know by face value. It is Alex Spiro. We kind of call him damn near Rock Nation's lawyer because we he's always representing some interest or some artist sign there, right? So it could not be um, Jay-Z, could be other people if it is um, Alex Spiro. But it would make sense if, if it was Alex Spiro because Alex Spiro promised that there was going to be a lawsuit against bloggers for talking crazy about his client, and there was. So then maybe if you're down to sue a blogger, 
why would you sue a, a, a law firm who seemingly would be targeting maybe your clients if they're thinking that y'all pockets is deep? Y'all got them deep, deep pockets. They trying to see what's up. Potentially, right? Now, this would be interesting. This would be the... This would be the thrill in Manila, if you ask me. Alex Spiro, they claim, has never lost a case. Him going against Tony Busby, who, forget his litigation record, I think he has the people behind him in their belief that Diddy is a generational creep. So when he's representing 120 potential victims, even if you don't believe half of them, Shit, maybe you believe five of them. He's going to have people rooting for him. If you look on his Instagram, with him announcing that he's about to get sued, people were like, yo, check this out. Keep going. Don't let them scare you. Look, my hero, go. Every name gets released. You're amazing. Keep it up. So this is why I say this might be the thriller in Manila. Let's... It, again, we don't know if it's Jay. But this is this is going to be the test of, let's see how powerful some people are, right? There's been zero criminal cases, or not criminal, civil cases that's involved Sean Carter. If this is something to do with Sean Carter, let's see if his Michael Jordan-esque lawyer could have a court shut this down that his name never gets mentioned. Now, if those things are true, all the things I said preceding, this would tell me Diddy was never on the level of Jay. Respectfully, never. Because Jay is the real gangster. Or maybe Diddy fell out of that place where his power or the other or, or the entities he built up around him could protect him. Because, again, we don't know if it's Jay. Could be somebody else. We don't know if it's, um, we don't know if it's Alex Spiro. Could be somebody else. But whoever this high profile person is, it seems like they're taking it with kid gloves. It's basically saying, you don't want to mention this motherfucker's name. I wonder who that could be. I wonder who that could be. And they even doubled down on it by filing as a John Doe. I wonder who that motherfucker could be. Hmm. This guy knows it's about to be a thriller in the Manila. It's going to be a rumble in the jungle. You know why? In his post, he just started saying random shit. The nigga says, I'm a Marine. Like, I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck? This got to do with you serving for the U.S. military. Look. Wait, no, sorry. He says, I am a U.S. Marine, brother. <laughs> Who the fuck could have even, an, uh, even, this nigga had a press conference, but I'm going to be honest with you. This message kind of feel a little bit shook. Who the fuck is that powerful? Who y'all think, Jack? Let me see who y'all, y'all might have some names for me. Who y'all think? It's a little spooky, man. Oh, the mic is fucked up? <laughs> Somebody said, nah, this sounds like Fonzworth Bentley. Y'all are y'all are jokes. Somebody said, oh, somebody said Jamie Fox. Ooh. Jamie Fox. But but 
Why would Jamie Foxx be using a New York attorney? Jamie Foxx is an L.A. guy. Quinn Emanuel. Quinn Emanuel. I'm, I'm Googling to see if he's ever worked with Jamie Foxx. I've heard that. Oh. Oh. Okay. Somebody say Jimmy Iovine. Okay, that's an interesting one. Jimmy Iovine. Wow. Okay, that that that's that's that would be powerful. What the fuck, nigga? I just googled this shit. Not one result came up. Hold on, I gotta just refresh it. That, that's some spooky shit, right? What the fuck, nigga? Now wait. Huh? <laughs> Yo, chat. Let me. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Once I put his name right. Woo. Yeah, Jimmy Iovine was sued before. He was sued, but the plaintiff dropped their lawsuit. Supposedly, there was a settlement. Hmm. And and yeah, and it was Douglas Wigner for the woman. Who is his lawyer? See, this, this is how you know they got paid. They say notice of discontinuance with, what the fuck? I gotta listen to an ad? What the hell? Bruv, I'm not listening. I'm not watching no ad, bruv. It says discontinuous with prejudice. Holy. That's crazy. Hmm. Could be him. You think Obama? Why would Obama be at a Diddy party fucking men or women, bro? Interesting. Says the man says attorney Tony Busby and his firm threatened to unleash entirely fabricated malicious allegations of sexual assault, including multiple incidents of a R word of a minor, both male and female. OK, so I'm, I'm guessing this person's gay or maybe thought of as gay. Because if, if the allegations are saying that they did R word with a man and a woman, you're thinking this person gay, right? The suit goes on to say Busby's demand letter alleged the plaintiff R-worded the males and females while they were under the influence of drugs at parties hosted by Diddy. The plaintiff re references, so this anonymous high-profile person, past lawsuits Busby has filed against other celebrities, including football star Deshaun Watson. The man claimed Busby tried to shake down Watson and others by making dubious claims that he knew wouldn't stand up in court. The lawsuit obtained by TMZ goes to claim Busby did the same thing against Green Bay Packers kicker Brandon Mc McManus. Who's that guy? Wow. NFL would not discipline free agent after finding insufficient evidence. Free agent kicker will not face NFL discipline after the league found insufficient evidence that he violated a personal conduct policy. He was accused by two women of SA during a charter flight to London when he was playing for Jacksonville Jaguars. So even the NFL said we looked into it that shit bullshit. And apparently the lawsuit was resolved. Ah, 
Oh, so there was a settlement here. He lost his job, though. He got cut from the team. Wow. Now the case has been resolved. The plaintiff's most likely. Oh, okay. So, so the, the I guess the plaintiff. What the, the, part of the settlement is don't talk to the NFL. Ah. I guess it's still a civil suit. Was police involved here or no? Most of these situations, there's no cops. It's just. Law enforcement, no. Yeah, no law enforcement in this thing at all. Interesting. So they're saying that he shook down Brandon McManus. The suit claims the NFL investigated and found insufficient evidence and closed the case. Well, also, they settled the case, though. So that, that person wasn't talking anyway, based on probably an NDA they had. Busby appeared on TMZ's 2B do documentary. What do you say? At my lowest, I was barely eating and over-exercising while still gaining weight. That's when I turned to hers. Oh, my God, man. Yeah, I think it's Odell Beckham. Really? Odell Beckham Jr., huh? So I just feel bad for the goddamn boiled eggs. <laughs> you and me both, chat. Hold on, this ad is just taking way too long. Here we go. He did these freak offs. Freak offs. You saw celebrities there that you recognized. Mm -hmm. It was a rapper that we all know. Straight up porn directed by Diddy. I'm just grateful to have made it out. I'm curious what you think about that criticism that you know, you put enough embarrassing things in a complaint or say you're going to, um, and it forces a settlement and it becomes almost, that's the game. Um, what do you say about that? That's, th that's a criticism I hear on the other side. No, it, it's, it's, a fair, it's a fair point. I mean, it, you know, I, the system is the system. It's a gulag, if you will. It's a, you know, it's a tough, tough process. And we always attempt, uh, make an attempt to resolve these cases without the filing of a lawsuit. That's just what we try to do. And if that, if we fail in that, we're going to file the case and we're going to pursue it with with aggression. Mm, okay. Today is actually a really exciting day. Interesting. What do they say about it here? Today is actually a really exciting. Oh my God! Enough, bro. Enough of the ads, man. Do I got to put it back on? Hello. All the lawsuits against Diddy most suing him. Most of them. A lot of them. Yeah. More than 120 lawsuits. So, and That's well, what is, eventually, eventually he'll have that Tony number. Busby. And 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 it's for extortion. Extortion. Yeah. This is uh, a, a potentially a game changer in the Diddy lawsuit arena because uh, someone, a prominent, only referring to himself as a prominent uh, figure. Now. Let, let me um. Let me tell you why this is some interesting legal jostling right here, right? Remember, remember the Kevin Hart case. Okay, remember Kevin Hart case. When Kevin Hart cheated on his woman, there was a somebody put up a camera to film him, and he basically came out and said, "Yo, they wanted ten million dollars from me. Um, I'm gonna just tell the truth." And we found out there was an arrest for an extortion. Now, the case was dropped later. But the guy who was charged was Kevin Hart's friend. His name is JT Jackson. He came back out and said, yo, this is what happened. When you're powerful like Kevin Hart, you could get the government, in that case, L.A. County, to file a to file a criminal charge just because you complain to them and you make a case for them based on your investigations. And they said, essentially, he said, I was charged because Kevin Hart had the DA around his finger. Now, here's why I bring that up. If whoever this high-profile person is with this Diddy stuff, 
is claiming they're getting extorted. Now, granted, this is it's very different here. A lawyer extorting you is going to not be like, send $10, billion, $10 million to this crypto wallet here. Like, that's how they were saying to Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart was like, what the fuck? So, like, that's like playbook extortion. A lawyer is going to be like, oh, it wasn't extortion. It was a demand letter. It was um, it was something in lieu of us filing litigate. Like, they know how to. It, it's basically this, extortion is give me money or this is going to happen. This legal way of doing it is the same thing, except technically and legally, that's not extortion. Now, this is what I'm saying. There's going to be some legal jostling here. If we think that that this person, whoever it is, I know some people are saying Jay, some people are saying somebody maybe associated with Rot Nation. If this person is that powerful and they have the almighty powerful Quinn Emanuel law firm on their side, could they get this guy, Tony Busby, who's a lawyer himself, and by the way, a guy who has recovered over $10 billion for his, for the victims of the cases he's represented, could they get maybe this extortion allegation investigated by the feds or by anybody? That would be crazy. But I guess that's that's the realm we get into when we're talking about power, we're not talking about regular people here no more, Chad. We're talking about super powerful people where, think about it, everybody's name is just getting thrown around. They throw Metro Boomin' name in there, some shit. They throw this person's name. They throw, my, they throw every name in, in some shit. But one person's name, they're filing lawsuits to even figure out if they could throw the name in there. That, that's got to be some power, right? Who has some connection to and Diddy. And has connection to Diddy, admittedly says this is some, in their lawsuit, they say this is someone who associated with Diddy, attended his parties, uh, and because of that association, uh, they say that this person uh, received. Now, that actually, maybe I don't know my, my, my history too well. I actually think that, that kind of makes it feel like it's not Jay. Was Jay a frequent person that went to a Diddy party? Like, I never heard people say, oh, yeah, I saw Jay at the party. Like, I never heard that. Like, was he ever frequent? Like, it, it never felt like he was just an attendee at Diddy parties. So that's why I kind of feel like, oh, no, you're not talking about Jay. Truth be told. Like, that's where other names come in. Like, we're not talking about, like, maybe, like, uh, let me see who, uh, Chris Brown. No, but uh, I don't know. Who else is, like, really powerful? Uh, I don't know. Somebody said, yeah, I think it's Jamie Foxx. Somebody said Jamie Foxx. It might be Meek. It could be It could be Meek. It could be Meek. Could be Meek. You think it's Meek? Mm, interesting. Meek was at a lot of them parties, allegedly, right? Mm. Okay. A demand letter from Tony Busby. Now, we spoke to Tony Busby. We were telling you about these demand letters. In, in he, fact, it's in our documentary. It's in our documentary. He's very open about the fact, Tony Busby is, that uh, he has sent these letters to celebrities who, even if they weren't necessarily engaging in any illegal activity, but if they were at a party and did nothing to stop illegal if they, activity. If they saw, for example, correct. somebody... Um, who is having sex or where they're not really competent to make a decision to say yes to it because they're on drugs or alcohol, um, he feels they are as guilty as the perpetrator who essentially raped that person. Right. And he has made that really clear. He made that clear in our documentary and said he's going after him. Well, now somebody... Some people say Clive Davis, but, but I think Clive Davis were in freak offs. Like, come on, bro. How old is Clive Davis now? Like, nigga's old as shit. The dude is 92. Nigga might need, nigga might need like a, uh, uh, he might need 15 honey packs to even, you know, get like a, a reaction down there, you know? Somebody got that letter. A celebrity got and that decided letter. decided they weren't going to take it. <laughs> they just weren't going to just let Tony Busby make this demand of them when they clearly feel they did nothing wrong. 
So now they are suing Tony Busby for extortion. Now, um, we, we talked to him in this documentary. It's called uh, The Downfall of Diddy Inside the Freak Offs. And I spoke with him about this very thing, about whether filing or sending a demand letter basically saying, I got a lot of embarrassing things to say about you, even if it's not necessarily legally wrong that you did, um, was that kind of the game here to um, exact money for fear on the other on the other side I that they're going to file a lawsuit? I thought his response to you was stunning. We've been here is uh, what Tony Busby said. I'm curious what you think about that criticism that you know you put enough embarrassing things in a complaint or say you're going to, yeah, um, and it forced. The system is the system. It's a gulag, if you will. It's a you know it's a tough, tough process. And we always attempt, uh, make an attempt to resolve these cases without the filing of a lawsuit. That's just what we try to do. And if that if we fail in that, we're going to file the case and we're going to pursue it with, with aggression. You know, Tony Busby it may seem a little unseemly, but what he's saying is right. This is the way, Harvey, we've covered these cases forever, where aggressive plaintiff's lawyers will reach out to somebody and say, unless you go ahead and pay my client money now, I'm going to file a lawsuit against you, and whether the allegations are true or not, it's going to be really embarrassing just to have the lawsuit filed, therefore pay up. And that's what Tony Busby is doing. Now, he be I'm not saying that he doesn't believe in what his clients are saying. He doesn't believe that he has a viable lawsuit. But the plaintiff in this case, the John Doe that's suing him, is saying Tony Busby knows they're false and is, fi and is sending these letters anyways, and that's a violation of his legal ethics, and he says a violation of the, the laws around extortion. So, Jason, in the legal community, Community. So, what we've seen happen to um, in so remember Tony Busby's a really he's really up there. Uh, what's the guy's name again? Tyrone Blackburn. He was the first one that started firing off the lawsuits at Diddy, right? This guy, and um, he's the one who essentially represented. Um, Lil Rod, okay. Now keep in mind, from what we know, Lil Rod is not listed as a victim, um, in the in the federal lawsuit. But also, Tyrone Blackburn was actually, you know, referred. So as everybody knows, Diddy, aka the Diddler, he has finally been locked up, and it's been crazy ever since. I'm not gonna lie. Now you feel me? He's in prison, or let me rephrase, jail, on suicide watch, you feel me? That's kind of a crazy life. You go from being a billionaire, mansions all over the world, having free calves, you feel me, with women and men, you feel me, thousand bottles of uh, baby oil. Man, even though I do think Diddy is very, 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 very guilty, I want to ask one thing. If what Diddy did is considered sex trafficking isn't like what every like high profile entertainer who like fly women from Instagram like all over just for sex sex trafficking as well like that's a question I just want to ask you feel me because you got to call a spade a spade if Diddy's doing it then you got to look at air almost every celebrity who does the same thing or who throws big big parties and you feel me women pull up and they do crazy freaky stuff at those parties, bro. Like I don't know. <clears throat> so like and I only asked that because I really sat there and think and thought to myself, like, man, I don't necessarily feel bad for Diddy, but and I don't think Diddy is a good person. And I think he probably, when they really investigate deeper into Diddy, they're going to find way other stuff besides all this freak stuff that he probably did do. Man, this freaky stuff and all the allegations and stuff, like how you see all the executives and stuff stepping down, Diddy is coming, bro. I, I, no, no Diddy, but Diddy is coming, no Diddy. I think he's going to expose everyone and like labels are scared and they're trying to get rid of everyone and everything. If Diddy ends up like the dude, the who's that one dude with the island who killed himself? If Diddy ends up like that, we should not sit there and act surprised. You feel me? But it's your boy Big Act News. Make sure you like, come subscribe.
I'd say pray for Diddy. Honestly, pray for Diddy, man. He probably needs it right now. He's probably feeling, probably Meat Mills on the phone with him, trying to keep him calm. Feel me? He's probably telling Meat Mills, send me some pics over. You feel me? I miss you. I like when you do it like that. But if it means it, boy, big actors, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I am out.